This historic moment, the last U.S. troops have withdrawn from Afghanistan, ending America's longest war, with the Taliban we pushed out in 2001 back in control of that country again. President Biden, who will address the nation this afternoon, and we're going to talk to his national security advisor in just a few moments. The U.S. launched Operation Enduring Freedom on October 7, 2001, less than a month after 9-11. And there is an image of the last American soldier to leave Afghanistan after weeks of chaos. Our chief global affairs anchor, Martha Raddatz, starts us off with the very latest. Good morning, Martha. Good morning, Michael. It has been a chaotic and tragic end to America's longest war, with those 13 service members and more than 170 Afghans killed by a suicide bomber before that final military flight lifted off. This is the last American service member out of Afghanistan. In this image released overnight, Major General Chris Donahue, who was leading the evacuation mission at Kabul airport, seen boarding the last military flight out of Kabul, nearly 20 years after he first deployed to Afghanistan in 2001. Those final flights departing Kabul, transporting all U.S. military forces and all U.S. diplomats, marking the end of America's longest war. The last massive C-17, like this one, packed with American service members, left Afghan airspace at 3.29 p.m. Eastern time, just one minute prior to the August 31st deadline. Below, celebratory gunfire filled the air. Secretary of State Antony Blinken stopping short of labeling the Taliban as the legitimate Afghan government, but acknowledging the country is now in the hands of the Taliban, but Blinken saying he would be willing to work with an Afghan government. If we can work with a new Afghan government in a way that helps secure those interests, we will do it. More than 120,000 people evacuated in 17 days, but U.S. officials estimate between one and 200 U.S. citizens who want to leave remain in Afghanistan. Blinken reaffirming America's commitment to helping those U.S. citizens leave, but that will require working with the Taliban to reopen Kabul airport or traveling by land. We have no illusion that any of this will be easy or rapid. It will take time to work through a new set of challenges. Just under two weeks ago, President Biden sitting down with George, saying he would not leave any American citizens behind. No, Americans should understand that we're going to try to get it done before August 31st. But if we don't, the troops will if, if stay. If we don't, we'll determine at the time who's left. And? And if, there are American forces, if there's American citizens left, we're going to stay till we get them all out. But the head of U.S. Central Command, General Kenneth McKenzie, says that didn't happen. We did not get everybody out that we wanted to get out. Nor did they get all the military hardware out of Kabul airport. But the military did render it non-operational. On the ramp at, uh, at, at HKIA are a total of 73 aircraft. They'll never be able to be flown again. The United States also leaving behind billions of dollars of active and operational military hardware abandoned by Afghan forces, including 600,000 arms and tens of thousands of rockets. The now 20 year war coming to a close, but not without significant loss. The cost was 2,461 U.S. service members and civilians killed, and more than 20,000 who were injured. Sadly, that includes 13 U.S. service members who were killed last week by an ISIS-K suicide bomber. But despite the tragedy, Donahue, the last to leave overnight, saying last week he is hopeful about Afghanistan's future. They're incredibly resilient people. They're integrated into the world. I'm not saying there are not tough days ahead, but this is a completely different country. And uh, I, I wouldn't count the people of Afghanistan out. But in the coming days, along with those American citizens left behind, there are thousands of Afghan allies who are desperate to escape the Taliban with no clear way how to do it. This is truly a stunning ending to those 20 years of fighting the Taliban, knowing we are now leaving it back in their hands after trillions of dollars, thousands of lives. This is how it ends, leaving so many asking. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.